Okay, Linky Brains, back at the pod board. Okay, once again, it's Casual Friday. And so, we're going to, you know, roll in the jeans and t-shirt and talk a little bit about blood type and genetics of blood typing. All right, now this is a little bit different than the simple genetic models we've been using. All right, it's even a little bit different than when we talked about incomplete dominance. All right, incomplete dominance was when we took a red flower and bred it with a white flower and we got pink offspring. So neither allele was really dominant over the other. Pink wasn't completely dominant over white. You got a half and half offspring. All right. Um, in regular genetics, in simple inheritance, we talked about a purple flower crossed with a white flower and we got all purple offspring. So purple was completely dominant over white. All right. In this case, we're going to talk about co-dominance. So this is just like if you're called to be the co-captain of the football team or the co-chairperson of an activity. All right, you are equally, equally the captain of the football team. Okay, in this case, we have a couple of alleles of the blood type genes that are equally dominant. All right, one's not dominant over the other. They are equal at the top. So when we look at the blood typing genes, all right, just the genetics of it. We're going to talk about who can give it to whom and, and so on. We're just going to talk about how we determine the genetics at this time. All right? Blood types, we actually have three alleles. Three alleles. All right? With normal genetics with one trait, we were talking, with one gene, we were talking big A, little a. Okay, you had two alleles. In this case, we have three alleles. A, B, and little i, we call it. Little i basically is the O allele. So if we have three alleles, we have some different combinations we can look at, all right? If you have type A blood, okay, there are two possible combinations of genotype you can have if you have type A blood. You could be big A, big A. Or you could be big A, little i, okay? A is dominant. And so having one copy of the A allele here gives you type A blood type. All right, it's dominant over the O allele. Now, if you have type B blood, you could be big B, big B, or big B, little i. Once again, the B is dominant over the O allele, which is little i. Type AB blood. A and B allele are both dominant, and so they will both show up in the phenotype. So if you have a B genotype, you have a B blood type. They both show each other. Neither one masks the other. If I have type O blood type, it's completely recessive. It's the recessive allele. And so the only genotype I can have to have type O blood is little i, little i. We're not really going to get into why we use the little i for type O blood here. We don't have time. All right, there is a reason, a method to the madness. All right, just know that it will always kind of be written this way. Little i is the O allele. If you have little i, little i, you have type O blood. Okay? So, when we do genetic crosses with people with a certain blood type, all right, we can st still do just a simple four square punt square. All right? So, let's pretend that I have a person with type AB blood and I have a person with type O blood. And they decide to have children and we need to look at the possible offspring that they could have from a person with type AB blood and a person with type O. Okay, so what we can do is we can come down here and draw our Punnett square. In the podcast, anywhere we have room, right? This person has type AB blood. So once again, we put one copy of each allele in each column. All right, over here, this person has type O blood, little i, little i. When we do the cross, this first potential offspring would have big A, little i. The second person here, potential offspring, would have big A, little i. This person, this offspring, would have big B, little i. And the fourth square would be also big B, little i. So I have two possible genotypes from this blood type. Parents with type AB blood and type O blood can only have these two potential offspring. 
2 with type A blood, and the genotype is big A little i, and 2 with big B little i type B blood. All right. None of the parents will have the blood type that they each carry. All right. This person was type AB, this person type O. So you see how the blood, basically genetics, okay, the alleles crossing those alleles in a Punnett square can change things all right, with having three alleles. Now, if we were to come over here and have a person with type A blood and type B blood, well, to be honest, we might not know what their genotype is. All right? So let's pretend we had a little simple pedigree. This person had type A blood. This person had type B blood. And they had a daughter, and she had type O blood. And then they had a son who had type a B blood. Alright, so we have to kind of figure out the possible combinations of type A and type B that can give us those potential offspring. Okay, so down here, if we draw a Punnett square, alright, if we draw a Punnett square, what we notice, we have to ask ourselves a few things. Type O. Type O blood is little i little i. So each parent here has to pass on a little i allele to its offspring. So this first parent has to be big A, little i. The second parent also had to pass on a little i to their offspring to get that O blood type. Okay? So this second parent must be big B, little i. And when we do the cross, we notice that the first square will contain a person with AB blood type, and we see that right here, so that's possible. Okay? The fourth person down here has type little i, little i, type O blood, and that person is right here, that child is right here, so that is a possibility. Okay? Now, this would be type B blood with big, with big B little i, and this would be type A blood. So they could potentially have more children and have a child with type A blood, type B blood, from this cross, you can get all four blood types, okay? And so if we had a pedigree like this, which on my exam for inheritance, I do have one like this, we can basically determine the genotypes of these two people with blood determined by looking basically at the offspring. What do the offspring have? And so what do I know about this?